world, John G. Modern Design Aquascaping. Our team builds custom ponds, fountains, and waterfalls out of natural stone and wood. My goal, educate and inspire the world about ponds and water features. We are back in California, but that's not what this video is about. A couple of months ago, I got the opportunity to drive out to just south of St. Louis to pick out some amazing limestone boulders. Guys, these are totally different than our Tennessee mountain stone. They're all weathered and worn and wrinkly. They just have so much character. It's a lot denser rock. It's a lot different looking than what we usually work with. You're gonna love this video. I drove out to an island where these people have a beautiful lake house. We're gonna have the opportunity to do two videos. We're gonna do a video on a fountainscape. We're gonna do a video that has a waterfall with fountains in it. The guys are just gonna go ballistic on this job. It is gonna be super fantastic. This is video number one. You guys stay tuned for the Boulder Limestone Fountain video. Tristan and the guys are gonna tell you all the rest of the details. I'm gonna get busy on this. You'll get to see another waterfall video from California later right now you're gonna to get to see the limestone boulder fountain video. I'm out. I have to drive to Missouri to Simcoe Stone, pick out some amazing limestone boulders. Jump in the car with me, guys. I'm gonna make a quick trip out, 24 hours round trip to Simcoe, St. Louis, pick out boulders and back. Stay tuned, ride along, I'm out. right there kids, B-A-T's, I'm just saying. Everybody asks me how I do my designs, I do them by feeling, and I pick the rocks that feel right, that's how important it is. When I'm making all of these custom fountains that I'm putting together and picking out the stones for my personal water feature, I gotta lay eyes on these things. I gotta mark the rocks that speak to me. That's why I'm here. That's why I drove 425 miles each way just to pick out a couple loads of rock because that's how important it is to me. I'm gonna go out here and drool over these amazing stones. Out. Look at that. Look at that. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's why I drove out here. Look at this. This is the kind of thing I come this far for. This stone is about 10 feet long, about two feet high. I don't know if you can just see the crevice washed through this rock right here. All right, kids, that's it. I have to shut myself down. I picked out 36 pallets of some of the most gorgeous boulders. And look at this mongoloid right here. Total column, four feet tall, three by three. You can't stifle my excitement when I look at these rocks, a lot of pallets with two rocks per pallet. Those are for John's job. There's a lot of pallets that have four, five, six, eight rocks on them. Those are for the waterfalls and the fountainscapes that we're gonna build when I get home. I'm gonna drive seven hours back to the homestead. I'm out, John G gone. going on here is a particularly special project to me because it's not every day I get to work with Missouri limestone and not only do I get to work with it everything we are building here is going to be built out of Missouri limestone so we've got I don't even know like 15 tons of boulders to work with we've got a fountain that's going right behind me three custom drilled limestone boulders we're going to drill little custom lights into the side it's going to be freaking awesome we've got amazing driftwood on this project and we actually brought some but the funny thing is driving down the driveway we found tons of it and she gave us permission to go scour the woods and lo and behold we have endless amounts of cedar stumps it's beautiful so we can have the craziest pieces of driftwood in this thing we're going to be in this beautiful place for two weeks so you guys watch this come together because it's going to be epic and i'm super excited because i get to build with a different kind of rock in a different place it's awesome it's amazing i'm gonna get to work stay tuned
didn't take long, ladies and gentlemen. First hiccup that we've run into, this has some mild amounts of soil. This is solid rock. You can hear and see. It isn't even like slate stone. It doesn't even break. Our excavator would not do anything to it. So uh, what we've had to do is take an immediate hiatus after about 30 solid minutes of breaking ground and move to the backyard, start pulling out stumps, disassembling the little water feature that's back there, and hopefully we can have a machine with a jackhammer attachment by morning. So expect the unexpected. That's what we got. I'm gonna go to the backyard. Try and do something back there. Finally got our hole dug. It's been like 48 hours. Jackhammer didn't show up on time. Not even like fashionably late, like the whole next day kind of late. So yesterday we just hung out and kind of played horseshoes and went on a walk about through the woods and went for a swim, and hung out, and now today, finally, we've got hole number one dug and about five hours of sunlight left if we're lucky. But yeah, these things happen, you know? You go to dig a hole and it's complete rock and you gotta get a jackhammer and it decides to skip a day and shows up a day late. And now here we are, almost the end of week one. We dug a hole. <laughs> I'm gonna go home and cry in my beer tonight. <laughs> it's gonna happen. Let's get out of here, my legs are going numb. So I just wanted to share with you guys a little bit about what's going on. What we have right here looks like a pile of liner, geo, all kinds of stuff. But the reasoning behind this, how we usually backfill our reservoirs, which is what this giant thing is, is instead of folding the liner in, we just dig extra. We do small gravel around the outside of the aqua blocks and we walk them in nice and flat so it cinches everything together and makes it nice and tight. Really easy, really fast. Um, what we're doing is much more difficult, really slow. And the reason we're doing this is because this entire hole was solid rock. So with the rocks on inside a liner, those little gravel, we don't really want it pushing against the liner on a wall that is also solid rock. So we have to fold everything in. We call it the burrito method. It is the safest way to do it technically, but if you have dirt walls, you don't have to worry about it. Here, we got solid rock walls. So we gotta fold everything in, and then we have to do topsoil all the way around the outside and tamp it like three inches at a time to get this thing to cinch in. And then you can unfold the burrito and you have your finished reservoir that is ready to start putting rocks on top of. So I just wanted to share a little tip bit of information with you guys on this because if you run into a situation where you have to get a jackhammer and you have to dig your hole with a jackhammer because it's solid rock, you should probably consider the fact that your walls are still going to be solid rock. So try not to have rock on the inside liner and outside liner because that for us is a no-no. So we've got dirt coming in right now and we're slowly but surely getting there and almost into fountain land. Yay. Well.
So we're finally on to the last few details on this fountain. So one thing we've got, we have an ununiform edge, yes, so that it's not a perfect circle for the reservoir. But one thing we want to do is incorporate extra accent stones around this thing. We want to have some accent rocks in there to break it up. We call them outcroppings. And then Cody over here, he's going to get our core drilled lights in these fountains pointed up at these awesome trees. <sighs> going to miss you, fountain. It's been real. It's been nice. But I'm going to have to go. <laughs> Completed limestone fountain. Well, bam! Here we go. Absolute blast building this thing. I love building limestone fountains. I like fountains in general, but the limestones, that's really my thing. Like, I don't know why. I don't know what it is about them, but ever since I built that one at Aqualand, and I built that one up probably on a mountain that's right across the street somewhere last year, it has become my favorite type of fountain piece. Seeing them at Dad's house, the whole just the limestones in general, how you get all these little pitchers and trickles and you get the little moss and the drips and it makes for the most interesting fountain pieces ever. And now we've got three of them slammed in here, back to back, beautiful limestone accents all over the place, ferns, driftwood for days and lights galore. This thing turned out spectacular. They are absolutely blown away. And that is why I love my job because people love what we do just as much as we love what we do. But we've had an awesome time making this thing happen, so limestones, beautiful things. Driftwood, beautiful things. Custom core drilled lights into custom core drilled fountain stones, beautiful things. I'm out. <laughs> Bam! What do you think, guys? How amazing was that? I absolutely love the Missouri limestone. We've done several of those. We have this awesome drill press now. We are custom making those fountains at my shop as we speak. Tell me down below what you think, man. What did you love about it? What did you hate about it? What about that job site? 
you can't ask as a builder for a more magical place to build water features. I know our team had an amazing time putting that together. Guys, appreciate you watching. Stay tuned for the next video because they are building the stream with the boulder fountains coming out of it. Absolutely nuts. I appreciate you guys tuning in, watching the Adams Family. Like, comment, subscribe, follow the boys on Facebook and all that other stuff. I'm gonna do this. You'll catch a video on that later with our traveling team, John G out.